Children in need? I don't know, actually. I'm not in England. <laughs> I would imagine it's probably some charity show. Apparently, I think it's like the Red Nose Day. <coughs> actually, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, I believe the um, Red Nose Day is for the children in need. No, but, um, uh, Red Nose Day is for sudden infant death syndrome here. I don't know. Anyway, I so it's, it's so a charity cool. thing anyway. Yes, I probably should have finished um, looking all this up. Let's see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I didn't say a word. You're thinking it. I can feel it with my psychic spidey senses. <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay. Who we are. BBC Children in Need is the BBC's UK corporate charity. Thanks to this. Vision is that every child in the UK has a childhood which is safe, happy, and secure. Allows them to allows them the chance to reach their potential. So basically, they raise money for kids. Okay. <laughs> in need, I bet. Well, you would hope so. Anyway, so every year when they um, do this children in need special thingy, they write little mini episodes of certain shows, uh, one of them being Doctor Who. And um, so I th I'm not exactly sure that's what I was trying to find while you were reading about um, your uh, the two. I mean, the one. The what? Um. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. Hmm. I believe it is. Let's see. First images of the 11th Doctor Matt Smith, presumably filming the new segment for this year's Children in Need, have been released. It's supposed to be shown between 8 and 8.30. That doesn't help me. What day? <laughs> I think it's this Friday. I keep hearing that it's this Friday, so... Or today! I mean, it's today at some point. Yay! Wow. Okay, so you guys might get it. I don't think Australia's going to get it. Cause I we... don't think we're going to get it. Uh, probably not, no, because it doesn't really benefit UK kids. Oh, uh, mm -mm, US no. kids. Sorry. Brain fart. But um, <laughs> apparently uh, you'll be able to find it online. Um, I know there's a couple of... Facebook groups and all this who have promised to post the uh, link to this mini episode. And apparently it's supposed to be really, really, yeah, like, blow your mind, blah, blah, blah. The usual that they say before they air an episode of Doctor Who. And how far off are we from the Christmas special? We are. I actually looked that up just to make sure because I wanted to tell you that. Cool. And then I forgot. Yes. <sighs> I think it's like 37 days. Yep, 37 days. Yes! Cool. So it's like so. a little bit over a month. Wow. Mm -hmm. mm. And have you heard the um, the newest rumor? No. Apparently, the guy who directed Harry Potter, I think I got that right, um, wants to direct an a an on-screen Doctor Who movie. Oh. Yeah. Now, it's up in the air. Nothing has been set in stone. And right now, it's all just rumor. Which, granted, rumors you know, rumors like this have been floating around for years now. But <sighs> everyone is just up in arms about it because one person said, if, if you follow anything on Facebook or Twitter dealing with Doctor Who, you're going to hear one side or the other. Mm -hmm. One side sa one side says they should um, start from scratch. And I'm like, no. The other side says, you know, pick up where they left off. Well, they're going to do this in Hollywood. And all I have to say to that is 1996. Did we not learn from that? Apparently not. Okay. The 1996 movie bombed badly. This is what happens when America puts their hands into Doctor Who cookie jar. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm, mm. 
I mean, he did okay with Harry Potter, I suppose. Not that I've watched any of them, but people seem to be happy. Well, I mean... Well, people that read the books, a lot of them are actually really upset with the movies because, well, with any movie that's been... Or with any book that's been changed into a movie, I almost got that really backwards. (laughs) They're never as good and certain details are changed around because you'd have to read the book to understand it one way or the other. Mm Mm-hmm. Good example of that would be Anne Rice's Queen of the Damned. Didn't happen anything like that in the book. No, Queen of the Damned was really bad. Yes, it was. I watch it just for the music. And because mm. of Stuart Townsend. <sighs> <laughs> mm. Okay, well, um, hang on, let me see if I can get this stupid thing to work. I've decided. Yay! I've decided I'm going to play with hubby's TARDIS that he keeps on his computer desk. There we go. That's enough of that. (laughs) Okay, shut up now. (laughs) No! (coughs) Shut up, stupid thing. Oh, and two other things. (laughs) One that's completely not related to Doctor Who. I apologize for the fact that I keep coughing. Um, I think I have an upper respiratory infection, so you're just going to have to deal with it for a little while. I'll try and move the mic as quick as possible, but if I accidentally cough in your ear, I apologize. Mm-hmm. Number two is I've been playing this game called Second Life. And in this game... You are able to, I won't go into the technical details mostly because I don't know them, but there's a way that you can get a TARDIS attachment and you can teleport from simulation to simulation via this TARDIS. Um, okay. (laughs) Second Life is a giant verb and like it has different worlds in it. Okay, so Which it's are a, called simulations. It's a virtual what? Because Skype just bug it up. Sorry, it's a virtual reality. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, you can teleport from world to world just like you would in Doctor Who by means of this TARDIS. And um, you can also buy Doctor Who costumes. You can get... Um, all sorts of attachments, like my avatar or my character had a um, a fourth Doctor jacket, a fourth Doctor scarf, the fourth Doctor hat, and the eleventh Doctor screwdriver, and the eleventh Doctor TARDIS. So it was kind of a mutt. Yes, and uh, <laughs> on top of that, she was also wearing fishnets, garter belts, and high-heeled boots. So it was like a mixture between the fourth Doctor, the eleventh Doctor, and a hooker. <laughs> well, as long as you got that all sorted. <laughs> Yes, so um, if you ever want to uh, check out some really cool Doctor Who stuff, um, I encourage you to go to Second Life, search for um, Doctor Who, and you know just kind of explore around, and I'm pretty sure that you'll enjoy it. I know that I have, and pretty much everyone that I've introduced to the game has, uh, re- has enjoyed it. Which, by the way, another quick off-to-the-side thing. Robin, I lost the game. Ha! Booyah. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. I reckon we should get into our stories, but I'm trying to figure out which one we're going to read first. I don't mm-hmm. know. Let's get the exposure one out of the out of the bag, I suppose. Ha ha. Okay, this is one my mum gave to me like three weeks ago. It's from the Gimpy Times. Now, Gimpy is sort of near where my mum lives. Like, she lives on the outskirts of Gimpy, which is an old gold mining town in Queensland, Australia. And no offence to the Gimpy residents, but, you know, the hills are alive with the sound of banjos. Anyway... Um, the chronicle story about three Toowoomba mates who branded their bums with a fire poker went viral today with nas- nationwide exposure. Boom, boom. New, uh, yeah. New, Luke Moore, M- Luke Maroney, Blair Cooper and Joel Austin phoned paramedics after waking up at lunchtime on Sunday with hangovers and third degree burns to their bum cheeks. 
a miscommunication sparked out a major turnout of emergency services to an explosion type incident with multiple casualties. The three red faced and probably red bummed men were left to explain to officers they had in fact branded themselves with a fire poker while drinking around a bonfire in the early hours of Sunday morning.